human beings, there is a beautiful thing in all of us which is called generosity. When there was the terrible situation in Southeast Asia, and we saw on television houses and whole areas being destroyed, there was a generosity of so many people who sent money, who did help. And, you know, people are beautiful. But generosity, you have power. You give what you want to give and when you want to give and to whom you want to give. There's a question of power and superiority. How can generosity flow into a meeting where we meet? And I look at you not as somebody in need, but I see you as my brother or my sister. And I begin to know your name. And I'm able to listen to your story. Tell me your story. And I'll tell you mine. So generosity to find its fullness must come to the place of meeting. Two hearts, communion of hearts. But you know, as I do, it's not all that easy. To get to know someone, it's about losing power. It's about listening. It's about becoming vulnerable. It's about letting go. So we can say nice things about generosity flowing into a meeting. But if a meeting is going to become a friendship and then a friendship becomes a faithful friendship, where is my freedom? Martin Luther King says something very important. We will continue to despise people or a group of people until the day that we have accepted what is despicable within us. I can only welcome people that are severely broken if I've touched my own brokenness. That's to say to have moved from generosity to a relationship to a communion of hearts, to trust, to vulnerability. There again, it's easy to say. It sounds great. But you know that we have these barriers within us to prevent us seeing what is despicable within us. It takes time to accept what is broken within me. I know personally, having lived with people like Enshanin and many others over the years, they have taught me so much about, about relationship, but also I've learned a lot about my own violence. I've discovered in certain situations where I couldn't stand certain situations and so rising up within me anger and violence. Living in community, I am better contained. But when I hear about a mum or a dad who've killed their son because they got, got into unbearable situations, yes, it was terrible what they did. But I know, and I can understand, because I've lived similar things. That's to say, I've seen things rise up. See, in all of us, we have to get in touch, and I still have places to get to, where there's anguish and where there is inner pain. I know also that there are barriers, 
And it doesn't happen like that. Anna Freud, the daughter of uh, Freud, says the question is not so much to find out where all the problem came from, but it's how to live the more humanly possible with the problem. And all of us, we have these pains, these difficulties. These. But somewhere in our desire, in our realization of our difficulties, we want to become a friend of Shani or of others. And somewhere it is through that, that relationship that we're revealing to the person, I love you not just because you can do things, but because in your being you are precious. And even if one day you cannot do things, you're still precious. And I'm happy to be in relationship with you. And of course, relationship, the one-to-one, -one, is always a difficult reality. Community, belonging where the twosome becomes a threesome or a bit more. Where it's not just the other person that is revealing to me who I am, and if that person disappears, then who am I? There's a discovery that we need the we. We need the togetherness. We need support. And that we in, in communities like ours are saying that relationship between the we and the liberty of each one, but also to discover the relationship between spirituality and competence. We need to be competent in any type of relationship. I was talking about friendship and how friendship can become flattery. But is a friendship if we're not true? If we do not say the truth? We just hide together from the truth, from what is maybe the deepest within us. So the we is something important. We find this in, in Lash, the fragility of communities based on a fundamental reality of communion and communion of hearts. Something very fragile. Everything takes time and everything is built on freedom. We can only love freely. And a freedom which brings people, help them to stand up. A love that liberates and not a love that controls or possesses. Free and to sense that, that we can together, we have a mission. A mission and a meaning to our lives. And that mission, the greatest reality of a human being is to give life, to transmit life, to help people to rise up in freedom, to make choices, to discover their desire. A desire becomes a choice and a choice a project that they can rise up to give life receive life. See, the big thing of we human beings, and I think that is what we're discovering in Lash, is that as we give life, as we see people who come caught up in their angers, caught up in their pain, and to see them rising up in life gives a lot of meaning to our lives, to give life, to transmit life, to help people to open up and not be closed up behind the barriers and walls of so-called security which stifle freedom. And that means somewhere to discover a spirit, a meaning. A meaning about transmission of life about yearning for peace in a world where there's too much war, too much of a gap between the rich and the poor, too much of a gap between those who have power and no power. Maybe somewhere a thirst to come together. 
and the discovery that those who are the weakest are the most vulnerable somewhere call us forth they're teaching us about how God is vulnerable the vulnerability of God there I know I'm walking on eggs <laughs> and not hard boiled <laughs> the mystery of a vulnerable God of a little God dare I say of a naked God I was frightened because I was naked and so I hid and maybe the God was saying I am naked but I let myself be exposed just to be to be there to bring people to life so spirituality it's about tasting each moment to taste each moment that each moment of our lives is precious whatever the pain whatever the joy is precious and we as human beings we are called in some ways to discover that preciousness of people of each person as they grow in life or sometimes remain closed up we're in a most extraordinary moment of humanity where each person is can be seen as precious in the presence of God but we're also in a society where we're forgetting belonging we're forgetting responsibility to our common humanity and we can be closed up in fear so it is my prayer that more and more people can rise up to build community not for the broken and the weak but with them and thus become a sign of peace so thank you for listening